Hello everyone. In this video, we analyze the Citizenship Amendment Act of 2019. Firstly, we will look at what the Citizenship Amendment Act is and why it was brought into being. Secondly, we will look at what caused the entire uproar behind the Citizenship Amendment Act. Then, we will look at the arguments which the central government has advanced favoring its constitutionality while we also finally look at the arguments advanced against its constitutionality. So let us dive in straight ahead into the video. What is the Citizenship Amendment Act? The Citizenship Amendment Act was brought in with the intention of enabling members of six different communities, that is the Hindus, the Jains, the Sikhs, the Christians, the Parsis and the Buddhists from three different countries, which is Afghanistan, Pakistan and Bangladesh, from entering India and acquiring citizenship. So the Citizenship Amendment Act prima facie seems pretty clear and harmless, right? It seems like an act, act which was brought in to enable members to acquire citizenship and not to deny citizenship to anyone. So what caused the entire uproar behind the Citizenship Amendment Act? It, it lit a fire that engulfed the entirety of India. It burnt India in the months of October onwards. So what was the primary reason? The primary reason was that it excluded from its ambit one prominent community in India and that is the Muslim community. The Muslim community was excluded from this act and they were not conferred a privilege which was conferred upon these six communities which were included. And these six communities enjoy significant benefits in India by virtue of merely being in these six communities and are not oppressed as are the Muslim community by virtue of being a minority. This was the primary reason behind the uproar. And secondly, around the time of the Citizenship Amendment Act, there was a National Register of Citizens that was being done in the state of Assam. The National Register of Citizens in Assam excluded a total of 19 lakh people. And in these 19 lakh people, a significant number were those from the Hindu community and not from the Muslim community. So the Citizenship Amendment Act, what it enables is that these members who were, who were excluded from the National Register of Citizens, these members could have a backdoor entry through the through the Citizenship Amendment Act, while these Muslims who were excluded from the National Register of Citizens, they would not be conferred the same privilege. So in, by virtue of these two reasons, there was lit a fire in India that caused an uproar that was so hard to contain and which engulfed the whole of India. So now let us move into the question of its constitutionality and how the central government has defended the act. Now, the central government has defended the act with the first and primary reason that this act does not apply to Indian citizens. It applies to migrants coming in from these three particular countries alone. So why are Indians protesting is the question that the central government is asking. And secondly, to the, to the criticism that have been uh, raised by the detractors of the Citizenship Amendment Act, the central government has said that it is completely within its own policy discretion to choose the countries and to choose the communities which can be granted the privilege under the Act. Now, let us look at the arguments regarding its unconstitutionality. The first and foremost argument that has been raised is that the Act is manifestly arbitrary. What is the determining principle behind this Act? Why have these six communities been chosen? And why have other communities been excluded? Why these three neighboring countries alone? India has many other neighboring countries. Why have these three neighboring countries been selected? These are the questions that have been asked because under the statement of objects and reasons we can see that the reason behind this act was to enable people fleeing ethnic or religious persecution from these communities to enter India and to be able to acquire citizenship. So what of the Tamils of Sri Lanka? What of the Rakhine Muslims in Myanmar? What of the Ahmadiyas in Pakistan? All of these communities are also suffering systemic discrimination in their own countries. Why are they not conferred the same privilege? When Article 14 obviously confers equality amongst all and not just citizens, why does this act limit its privilege to just a few? That is the first argument that has been raised. Secondly, the argument that is raised is that it perpetuates unfair disadvantage. Muslims, on virtue of being a minority in this country, suffer a systemic disadvantage. So, 
being a Muslim is not something that a person chooses. It's just like being gay or being a trans person. So purely on account of a personal characteristic over which a person has no choice, they are being subjected to a disadvantage. So how is that fair? How does that get, get supported under the equality clause of the Constitution of India? These two arguments have been raised. Finally, the argument that has been advanced in favor of its unconstitutionality is that taken, taking into consideration a multitude of factors such as the systemic disadvantage which is, which is suffered by members of the Muslim community, this act perpetuates the existing disadvantage. All the talk around the National Register of Citizens along with the Citizenship Amendment Act created in, in the minds of the Muslim community a palpable fear that they would be subject to losing their own citizenship. And that too in a country where citizenship is not something that is granted purely on account of religion. It is in fact religion is purely, purely relevant to the considerations of citizenship. In such a country, religion has been made a significant or the only deciding factor in determining citizenship. One more thing that is relevant to this discussion is the fact that in the case of Keshavanda Bharati versus Union of India, secularism was held as a basic feature of the Indian constitution. So in this country where secularism has been made a part and parcel of our constitutionalism by conscious practice, the question that we need to ask is whether the Citizenship Amendment Act is what we need right now. And this question must be asked because the constitution is owned by each and every person of India. It is owned by the people of India, collectively, and it is yours and mine. It is yours and mine individually as well as collectively. So we must ask ourselves this question, irrespective of what the Supreme Court decides. Thank you. Please like, share and subscribe for more updates from Inspirit IAS Academy.